Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell Technologies World 2018. Brought to you by Dell EMC and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back here on theCUBE. Our live coverage continues here at Dell Technologies World 2018. We're in the Sands Exposition Center along with Keith Townsend. I'm John Wallace. We're glad to have you here with us on day one of our three days of coverage here. We're now joined by David Shikosius, who is the Vice President of Product IT Solutions and New Market Development at uh, Citrine Lake. And uh, Jim Aluto. Did I get it right, Jim? Jim Aluto. Aluto. <laughs> We've practiced this many times. Yeah. Uh, who is the Director of Cloud Provider Business Americas at VMware. And gentlemen, in all seriousness, thank you both for being thank with you. us. We certainly it's appreciate your time. Yep. Uh, so, talking software-defined data centers. Um, first off, let's just let's step really high level here and just talk about main attributes, qualities. I mean, how would you, if your elevator speech would be about what the CDCC would be, what, how would you describe it, and what are the key traits? Sure, well, I'll, 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 uh, I'll jump in front of the, the company that you sort bet. of coined the term and, and yeah, give right. my answer okay. first, and, and then let Jim expound from there. But really, you know, I think we can sort of sum up the software-defined data center in a lot of what we've learned in creating a managed private cloud based on what you would call a software-defined data center platform in that it just, it minimizes the number of moving parts. Right, we used to, we've, we've been doing managed private cloud for as long as managed private cloud has been a thing. Um, and that, what that used to mean five, six years ago was provision to the network, provision to security devices, maybe it's a converged device, maybe it isn't, maybe it's two different vendors. Sure, you've got vSphere, you've got vSphere in the middle of it all, but then you're talking to different storage tiers. If you want different flavors of storage, you're talking to multiple vendors back there. Piecing together a private cloud solution used to mean talking to a number of different technology stacks, a number of different uh, you know, API frameworks. And so software-defined data center, where the rubber hits the road and sort of well, from the coal face, means just a simplified view of being able to automate all that together, right? have it all orchestrated and have it be one common stack. Nicely done. Okay, well, <laughs> you, you go do the bookish version. Right. Well, really, uh, in its most simplistic form, spinning up end-to-end -end complete automation across compute, network, and storage assets. And uh, lately, we've gone to market with uh, VMware Cloud Foundation. Uh, that CenturyLink is now spinning up uh, as the root of their uh, service uh, that they're going to market with. And so uh, we've gone through an evolutionary process over the years where we've proven to the world the uh, advantages of virtualization, virtualizing compute. VMware in its Act II is now virtualizing the network. Uh, we're virtualizing storage now with vSAN, taking off uh, like wildfire, but now we're stitching it all together, right? And uh, in the form of a complete end-to-end -end automated and provisioned encapsulated virtualized data center. And that's the big efficiency here, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's one-stop shop, basically. You, know, you don't have to go out and, as you said, look for a number of different avenues or, or different uh, uh, right. pieces of this puzzle. So, it, so it, does, it, drives it drives efficiencies in the data center, but it also drives efficiencies and opportunities around the way you operate it. And you know, one of the things that we've been seeing, and it's sort of foundational to our managed services practice, is that the software-defined data center actually drives software-defined managed services. You have to change the way you do managed services to take advantage of all that capability. And so uh, we, we, we have a service we call Cloud Application Manager, which is really our tool that we use to model applications, deploy managed tooling to that application for 24-7 uh, you know, monitoring and management and, and, uh, and, and uptime and stability support, and then do analytics on that application to be able to show uh, you know, cost savings opportunities, best practice uh, opportunities uh, in, in more of a, an aggregated, reported way. Um, so Cloud Application Manager is a much more automated version of managed services, right? It's not ITIL from 10 years ago, right? It's not up, down, you know, just base level ticketing. You need to be able to change the way you do managed services, and you can only do that if you have a reliable underpinning platform. And so less moving parts, uh, a software-defined data center lets you change that, lets you change the way you deliver managed services. It, so Dave, the CenturyLink has incredible technical chops. There's always a point where you have to decide build versus buy. CenturyLink can choose to build all of this. You can take parts from the open source community, build uh, extremely custom solutions. Why VMware? Why the, when, when you guys have the technical ability mm -hmm. to build it, make a differentiating offering, why start with VMware as the base? Yeah, I, I think uh, you go back to 
what VMware's been in the market doing, and, and I, I even sort of you know, talked past it a second ago, right? The, the vSphere foundation is really solid, right? The device, the, the flexibility you have at the hardware layer, the flexibility you have um, at the real core nucleus of your compute and, and memory virtualization stack is super important. Um, and then really the, the, the idea of a building out into the software defined uh, very common, uh, common ownership stack, you know, and why VMware was great to partner with with regards to building out our next gen managed private cloud offering is because they've wired everything to work together, right? You, and you, know, and you, you said you, there are things you could go and try to build on your own, um, I think it's interesting what we're starting to see uh, is that, just to use something like OpenStack as an example, building a private cloud out of OpenStack is certainly possible, but you know, there's, no one, there's no one company owning it all end to end. And if you're a service provider, it's up to you to go figure it all out. Right? Or you can go and work with maybe one integrator partner, but they're making their own set of choices, and now you're, you're basically locked into that particular deployment model. So I think what, working with VMware, what we found is, first off, they've accelerated our time to market and our time to value around a managed private cloud offering. Uh, there's a lot of interoperability, and now there's a lot we're able to do around hybrid applications because something you deploy to VMware inside VCF is very similar to something you deploy in your own homegrown environment to one of the managed private clouds from, that we've been running for five or six years, where there's just a very clean migration and upgrade path with that interoperability. And really it's all about the market opportunity that VMware brings to the table. Our, our cloud strategy is incredibly simplistic, sure. but yet it has such a compelling business and value proposition, not only to our mutual customers that we're going to market in joint pursuit with, but also to our cloud providers. 500,000 plus enterprise customers using VMware. As we uh, take them along the journey, building out their private clouds that represents over 60 million workloads with the inevitability of them moving out to the cloud. So what we've teed up is a cloud provider community with our most strategic partner like CenturyLink, right? To uh, increase the odds of that uh, capturing those workloads onto a VMware platform, the uh, market opportunity that we bring to the table for somebody like CenturyLink is, is quite extensive, let alone all the benefits that the mutual customer gets, right? They get to protect their data center, their, their data and asset, their data and application assets, all the reliability, compatibility, uh, security that they would expect from their own VMware infrastructure, they would expect uh, from a VMware cloud provider like CenturyLink. So David, let's talk about the interface into CenturyLink. The one of the things that customers are starting to realize is that they have to differentiate based on just internal IP. So there's the, the API to everything now. What's, if you could describe, or maybe there is, what's the API to CenturyLink as I'm con consuming this software-defined data center that you guys provide? Okay, so sure. So that's actually a, a really exciting opportunity for us, and it's one that we've been sort of pivoting. If you sort of look at the history of CenturyLink, there was a there was certainly, and I'll, it sort of goes back 10 years, but there was a huge spike of CenturyLink's entry into the business-to-business -business market, right? Uh, acquiring Quest, um, getting the the the, uh, the the, the, the business that basically announced their entrance into the, the B2B marketplace. Then there was a number of more technology oriented and virtualization management oriented acquisitions because it recognized two things. One, we needed to be in IT solutions, in cloud, in data center. Um, but the, the also that the network was heading towards a highly virtualized, highly uh, orchestrated, highly software defined model, right? The, the network of you know, the 21st century was not going to be about buying a ton of big iron and putting it into pops anymore. It was going to be increasingly around managing x86 virtualization. So there, that set off a period of time within CenturyLink where we were acquiring managed services companies, IT solution companies, virtualization companies, um, that were helping to really to increase two things, our ability to uh, virtualize and manage virtualization, and then secondly, develop software in new ways and become much more familiar at the application layer. So we, add, we spent about five or six years with companies like Savvis and Tier 3 and Cognolytics, really adding to the company in terms of brain power and know-how and workload fluency. And then now we've just recently closed uh, on the merger and acquisition with level three. So now we're very much on a network up ascendancy, network scale ascendancy. So what we're, you know, the interface into CenturyLink is really taking a lot of those assets that we've built up and moving them together into more of a platform topology, which is re-architecting the way that we work. You know, we, we've bought cloud companies and we invested in virtualization 
to help us reorganize exactly what you're talking about, which is the way of interfacing with CenturyLink. Driving customer experience, being able to have a, a common user experience, whether you're interacting with it at a CLI, or via an API call, or with a tutorial that you're following via an online interface, and having a common look and feel uh, across those services. So, it's a journey, we're still on our way there, but we have the very beginnings of a lot of commonality that's starting to occur, whereby if you log into our public cloud management service, Cloud Application Manager, or if you log into our Network Interconnect service, uh, Network Exchange and Cloud Connect solutions, or if you log into uh, our, our public and private cloud offerings, very common look and feel across the piece, where there's one identity, one, one, collect, one billing collection, but then we allow each of those individual services to go and innovate on their own. And that's the key thing, right? You can go drive common user experience, that's super, um, but if, you, if, you, if you're waiting on a portal team to go design your UI for you, you're, you're slowing down. And so we've really been able to design a framework whereby there's one common UI, but it's more design patterns that every in internal team picks up and works with and then integrates into their release. And it's very important for VMware as well as we develop our IP that's relevant for cloud provider use cases is to open up those APIs to do just that, give you the yep. opportunity uh, to own that customer experience and differentiate yourself within the market. I think we talked about this last time too, where, where you know, VMware's entree into the service provider world uh, really taught them some lessons and they, they started adding things to their exactly. product that make it easier to be a service provider. Um, and some of the things like with, with the with vCloud Director and some of the ways that you can now work with that at an HTML5 layer and sort of create your own version around it, almost interact with vCloud Director at an API level allows us to factor it into that, that mentality of design pattern thinking and a common UI across all of our services. Right now we're working with a lot of those features on vCloud Director to enable our managed private cloud service. So what have the conversations been, been at the show? It's all about making it real. What, what have the real conversations been? Yeah, so um, you know, real, the real conversations with our customers that we're starting to have um, are, are Really, and just to tie it a little bit back to this idea of a software-defined data center, I think they're excited by the possibilities. Um, they're certainly looking to uh, really drive instrumentation at more places than they ever were able to drive instrumentation before. And there's the, the obvious industry examples of you know, IoT and sensors and things like that, but even things like business process uh, and being able to theoretically just rework the way a particular system works, turn it into uh, a microservice or an application that they can factor into their overall IT strategy, but then have that start to feed into a broad uh, data lake that they can then start making business analytical decisions from. That's one of the big patterns that we see, whether it's you know, occurring with a lot of our customers that we work with uh, in the built environment, that are working with, and really the customers that work with CenturyLink uh, in, in some of the most deep uh, and influential ways are the ones that are out there sort of in space. And I don't mean in space, I mean like <laughs> out there in, 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 a, in a geographic spread, like retail solutions and, and physical facilities and things like that where you, know, you have people coming to your location and you're trying to gather all that data back into more of a centralizing motion. That's where we're having some of our most interesting conversations with you know, those, those retail brands, um, you know, with bigger facilities that we want to be able to bring on net and turn into, basically have them turn into sort of data sources for their data lake that they can then start you know, moving forward and analyzing with some other yeah. professional services or tooling to go and start looking for what those insight, where those insights lie. So for me, this is music, right? So <laughs> what, what I'm seeing, uh, if customers want to wane off of IT functions altogether. They want to invest their resources around their core business. In their business, right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right, right, so what right. they're doing is they're relying on the subject matter experts now. Uh, the whole notion of being concerned about security and, and reliability out in, out in the cloud, it, that's long gone. They recognize that folks like CenturyLink can deliver at greater economies of scale, more secure, highly available. Yeah, and one of the things, one of the best ways we can sort of facilitate those conversations is to share a little bit of our own journey. Um, and it's not because we want to stare at our own product catalog and you know and, and walk through it page by page, but to share some of our own journey with from, with a perspective of realizing a long time ago that in our managed security business it was a big data problem, right? It's not an implementation and controls problem, and so we've been driving a whole lot more of our story and some of our service strategy is not only is it we feel a lot of these are very valuable services in their own right, but they show off a pattern of instrument it, drive it back to a data lake, and then take more of an analytical approach to it to add value as opposed to just being very transactional. We talk about the journey. It's been a good one, right? Uh, and yes, uh, continued success with that. Indeed. Uh, thanks for joining us here on theCUBE. We appreciate the time. Okay. Good, thank good you very much, David Jim. Back with more, you're watching theCUBE. We are live here at Dell Technologies World 2018 in Las Vegas.